Ahead of GDPR coming into force in May, I want to make sure my team and the wider organisation are taking into account broader market trends and developments. That way, we'll be able to ensure we've got the right protection and compliance in place for the long term, as well as maximising the opportunities GDPR offers. Today, I'm talking to Enza Yenapolo, analyst at Forrester, to get her views on what's happening in the market. Enza, what are the key elements to consider in order to ensure that data is properly protected? Well, to get to know that data, uh, data discovery and data classification is a starting point for a sound GDPR compliance program, but frankly, for any uh, data privacy or data security uh, program. Um, it's easy when you say it, but in reality, organizations still struggle very much to find out where data is and what that data is that they are trying to protect. But this exercise allows you to um, identify and assess uh, the risks in relation to specific data types in the context of specific data processing activity and also helps you understand how better to mitigate these risks and means protecting that data. And how can I design a coherent and cost-effective approach in order to adopt new technologies? Let me start here from, uh, you know, the fact that we adopt new technologies, emerging technologies, because ultimately we want to achieve a business goal. Of course, these emerging technologies, new technologies bring risks and very often high risks to the security of our organizations uh, or they increase the risk of privacy abuses. Now, I would suggest that you start from an approach and can be a very easy, simple framework. Uh, but a framework that allows you to see and these risks in connection to security and privacy uh, together with the business goals that we are trying to achieve. So when a marketing colleague of you know, your colleagues from the digital team comes to you and say, well, we want to you know, use a new technology, never start that discussion with, oh no, we cannot do that. Rather, work with them to figure out what's the best way to still enable them to allow to achieve what they want to achieve and at the same time using security controls and policies and processes to mitigate the risks up to the level that is consistent with your standards. This way, they will perceive you as a business partner that actually enables them to do what they want to do. Um, and also, as a result, they might learn more about those privacy and security risks, which will make your work easier. There are so many new GDPR label products and technology out there. Um, but let me tell you two things. The first one is that GDPR compliance requires extensive work in companies' governance, processes, people skills, and systems. Technology is a piece of this, but is a one piece of a broader picture. On the other hand, you don't really need new technology to comply with the GDPR. We need much of what we uh, have been using for a while. Identity and access management, for example, deployed consistently with the purpose limitation principle, for example, or encryption with strong encryption key management or robust anonymization. However, there are some interesting developments in automation and machine learning that you know, can, can help for GDPR compliance. Think about uh, um, automated discovery of structure and unstructured data, for example, or think about machine learning applied to uh, GDPR compliance programs and data protection impact assessment. Those can be very useful for GDPR compliance. So it's interesting that you mentioned we should be thinking broader than just technologies. Would you be able to expand on that? Sure. Um, I can uh, use one of the requirements of GDPR, actually, the privacy by design, to uh, um, explain a little bit more of what I mean. Privacy by design means putting privacy and security not only as a bold on in our new projects or initiatives, but really build that into those initiatives. Now, think about you know, your marketing colleagues coming to you and saying, I want a new app to engage my customers. And at that point, you as the security expert and also your privacy, uh, chief privacy officer, your data governance team, data scientists, the app developers, all of you will need to sit down at the same table on day one. And while you are you know, going through the ideation of that app, you have to start building into that, which are the security uh, controls and policies that you need to put in place to make sure that risks are mitigated. And this is true throughout the development of the app all the way down to the delivery to your customers. 
As you can see, we mentioned security controls. There is technology in these, but also we need processes to make sure that actually these security controls are aligned to the purposes, that, the business purposes that we want to achieve through the use of the app, but also processes to allow all these teams to come together and collaborate together for GDPR compliance. You will need governance to make sure that everyone is aligned for the work that they are doing. And remember, the goal is to bring this app to the market in compliance with GDPR and possibly really taking care of those security and privacy aspects that are so important to your customers. And in practice, how many organizations are ready for GDPR? Nice that you asked me in practice. So I'll start from a, a data point that we have. Uh, we know that globally 30% of organizations say that they are ready today for GDPR compliance and about a similar amount say that they will be ready by May. Now, these numbers are extremely high. Um, now, let me uh, come to the in practice part of your question. What I found is that organizations very often haven't um, put together and executed a comprehensive GDPR program. Rather, they had focused on one or more GDPR requirements. Uh, very often also these companies rely a lot on technology for GDPR compliance, we, which, as I have said, might be a short-sighted strategy. So yes, it's 30 percent, uh, but again, there is more context to it. And, and there's something I'm really interested in. How can I turn GDPR into an opportunity for my business? Nice, nice question. Um, a, a number of organizations that are, that are working uh, for GDPR compliance, they reported uh, having achieved benefits that are beyond meeting compliance requirements. These benefits are improved customer experience or improvement in their data strategies, as well as a number of improvements in the management of security and privacy policies. Some companies I'm working with for GDPR compliance um, also have decided to extend the scope of the GDPR program to become a broader privacy program. This means that they are establishing um, data handling practices and standards that uh, build on trust and they respect the um, personal data of their employees, of their customers as a core value. And we are not talking about compliance here, we are talking about business strategies that leverage privacy to deliver growth and also differentiation in the marketplace.